We got Lewis, and he's he he only owns traditional style kilts as his daily wear. Cool. But has been looking cool. into utility kilts to be an able uh, to be able to work in and work outside. Mm -hmm. uh, he doesn't like the lower riding utility kilt. Uh, Would we have a suggestion for a traditional mm. style looking kilt mm. that could handle the outside uh, wear and tear? If it's a utility kilt. Um, Depends on how you're, rugged you're talking to some. Yeah, people. yeah. It's. Uh, let me start with this. I'm gonna. I'm gonna go. Not necessarily product heavy, but a little product heavy, and come back around. Um, a, a synthetic fabric can be hard wearing. A you know, our, our poly viscose fabric in a casual kilt, which can be worn at the hip or above the hip, or a semi traditional kilt can be hard wearing. Those aren't going to be have pockets, so they're not really a utility kilt. Right. For utility kilt. You know, there's a few brands we'd recommend. And I have them here, actually, because we had another question about them. There you go. Um, there's, when it comes to utility kilts, a lot of them are made in Pakistan. Generally, we just recommend companies that are made in the U.S. or U.K. It's kind of our thing. We have our Celtic Artisan Guarantee. We know specific companies. We know specific owners. We feel comfortable uh, uh, referring our customers to them because we know them we know the quality of the work we know the quality of the people who are actually making the work um so utility kilts brand utility kilts they're a good one angry bastards yep. what are some of the other ones just because i can't think of it off the top of my head the top 10 yeah no, um i don't have any uh angry bastard utility kilts kilt this uh amera kilt uh built kilt and stump town those are american companies that we would recommend and canadian Built yeah, and Canadian. Built Canada. kilt is actually Canadian. Um, I was going to say, basically, the thing about utility kilts is that when they were first invented by Steve and his guys, um, he was trying to emulate how guys wear their pants and are used to wearing their pants. So he went for the lower rise and, uh, you know, closer to like a jeans waist, closer to on your hips, because that's what guys are used to wearing. So you're not going to find too many utility kilts. That trend has continued. So you're not going to find too many utility kilts on the market that have a higher rise. However, there is the possibility that you could contact one of these makers, especially a smaller, more bespoke company like Angry Bastard, I'd be willing to bet he'd be willing to give it a shot. Yeah. Tell them you want a higher rise. And one way you can express that is by saying you want to wear this util kilt with a traditional kilt belt, a wide belt. That will ping in their minds like, okay, you need space for the belt, therefore the waist is gonna, waistband is going to have to be wider. That's going to naturally bring the rise up. Communicate with the person you're buying the kilt from. If it's a smaller bespoke operation, they may be able to help you out. I would even be more direct. I would say I want to wear it at the belly button sure. or above my belly button. Sure. I wouldn't even leave it to the belt thing. I would mm -hmm. say, you know, I want to wear this here, which means the length is going to be X. And if you want to figure out the, the fill, that would be about a third the length. So if you're six foot tall, <clears throat> your length would be about 24. The fill, which is the sewn down portion, you know, from the widest part of your rear end to the top, is going to be about eight inches, one third of the length of the kilt. Um, now, I will say this as well: there's nothing saying that you can't wear a yep. utility kilt up higher. Yeah. It's just you get a longer utility kilt, and you make sure you're cinching the belt down when you're putting it on, and you're measuring around the widest part of your belly. So you can wear it higher. Yeah. You just have to make sure that you're, you know, accounting for certain things. You could fudge the measurements a little bit, but you'd have to be yeah. very careful. Um, well, utility utility kilts. I think they have belt loops wide enough that you could put a traditional belt. I believe so. Through them, right? Like a kilt yeah. belt. So that would be, yeah, that'd be a factor that would help with that. Yep. Um, I was going to take the opposite tack and basically say, don't assume that a traditional tartan wool kilt is not worthy of outdoor work. Um, tartan wool, the good stuff from Scotland. Um, is actually pretty pretty rugged fabric. Now I wouldn't necessarily go you know crawling on asphalt underneath my car in it. It's but expensive. Yeah, yeah, it can be expensive, um, but for a lot of work outdoors, it's not necessarily as bad as you might think. And those of us who reenact know this also, right? You know, mm -hmm. um, the guys in the trenches in World War One were wearing traditional wool kilts and getting them pretty darn dirty. So it kind of depends on what tasks you're planning on doing in it. Uh, there is some stain resistance built into tartan wool these days, also. So, you know, don't rule, don't rule out a traditional kilt if that's what you really love wearing. Um, buying one that's a little less expensive or buying a used one that's of a higher quality so you know the wool is good would be another couple of ways to tinker with it. 
I would, I would say. say just be careful about the fabric. If it's acrylic, um, no, 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 no acrylic. Avoid no acrylic. it from the pills, or it's, if, it's, if it's a looser woven fabric, yeah. it's going to catch on things and pull much, much easier. You're going to have pills in the surface of the fabric. Um, Staining, odor, the, yeah. all that. The old adage of if it's too good to be true, it probably is, yeah. generally holds true for kilts and highland wear as well. Yep, yeah. for sure. Yes.